I always wait for that participant's number to change. <laughs> and yep. As soon as it does, we're good to go. Um, all right. Hi, folks. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. My name is Ian Capizzoli. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at WBI. Uh, thank you for joining the uh, aerospace session um, tonight. I'm joined by one of our faculty members, Professor Gatsonis. Um, so for the purposes of this presentation, I'm basically just going to you know, do this intro here and then get out of the way. Um, but if you guys have any questions, uh, please use the Q&A feature. It should be either at the bottom or the top of your screen. And then we're going to have some time at the end uh, to answer those questions. So without further ado, Professor Gatsonis, take it away. Uh, thank you, Ian. I'll just give a few more minutes, one minute for uh, any latecomers to join the Zoom and then we'll start in the meantime. Uh, good evening, everybody. I have about 25 to 30 minutes today of a presentation. And then, as Ian mentioned, we're going to go to Q&A. It's important to have your questions uh, placed there, and we'll answer all of them. It's, this is probably the most important part of our uh, get together tonight. So as Ian mentioned, I'm a professor in the Aerospace Engineering Department. I'm the head also of the Aerospace Engineering Department. And I have here in this top slide, some of the activities that we're engaged in aerospace engineering. And I'm gonna go from right to left here as we see some of these pictures to tell you what each one of them does and how it relates to our undergraduate program. So right here to the right top, this is a picture of an electric propulsion device. Uh, these are uh, thrusters, engines if you wish, that we use for a spacecraft in space. And we do a lot of work in electric propulsion at WPI. Uh, here again, it's one of our vacuum chambers where we test space hardware. One of our professors here, our faculty, and one of our former students here, uh, Professor Blandino. So we're testing hardware. Most likely, they're testing a thruster there. And then to the left now, we have an um, aircraft. This is the model design, the CAD version, but we have also the uh, uh, original, the realization of that. These are part of the major qualifying projects, our senior level projects that all of our students do at WPI. Again, a rocket here, it's a high power rocket, a product of a, a major qualifying project, MQP, we call them at WPI. Another of our students here who is flying one of our micro vehicle, micro area vehicle, a part of the SAE. This was a part of a competition that uh, uh, we participated in. And here, right in the center, probably you recognize this, those of you who are interested in space, this little uh, fellow here, it's a CubeSat, we call them, right? This is a NanoSat made out of this uh, cubes, 10 by 10 uh, centimeters by 10 each. And uh, this is a test of, um, of one of these CubeSats. And again, here now, it's a product which involves the, this is rocket, this rocket here, is an MQP, but also um, involves members of the AAA club. I'm going to talk about it. And of course, uh, right here, we have Robert Goddard, who had a lot to do with uh, Worcester and WPI. So we're always proud to show you our uh, heritage and connection. Now, let's uh, set some uh, facts straight, first of all, to ensure that uh, all of you who are here uh, appreciate what those engineers do. And I have a few slides that uh, walk you through the um, job of an aerospace engineer, which basically involves design, development, testing, construction of every air and space vehicles and starting from aircraft, right? For civilian applications, we'll, we build and uh, fly and the test and construct all of these uh, vehicles uh, that you see here of different sizes for uh, civilian applications. And similarly, right, for defense applications, uh, we uh, develop test construct of uh, this kind of vehicles that are very, very different in shape and uh, configuration because obviously they play very different functions. So we do all of this, okay? So you need to like love aircraft if you are interested in aerospace engineering. Rotorcraft is another part of our portfolio. And again, rotorcraft, helicopters, let's call them, are available for civilian applications. Again, very different designs, right, and sizes. And of course, defense applications, and again, very different designs and uh, applications. Um, so that's also part of our portfolio. UAVs, drones, as we call them. Again, drones for defense and the civilian applications, very different again in configuration and uh, size. You see, for example, here, the Spirit, this is a drone designed by a company right here in Massachusetts, and we do business with them. 
uh, compared to the uh, Global Hawk, for example, very different uh, UAVs, but we are involved, the aerospace engineers are involved with these uh, systems as well. And of course, now we're moving to space, uh, launch vehicles uh, and uh, missiles. Of course, this is a part of our portfolio, Falcon 9. Most of you are used because you are watching on television things that are done by SpaceX and missiles, uh, again, for defense applications, uh, launch vehicles, right, and delivery vehicles are part of our portfolio. And finally, you know, my own favorite, obviously, space spacecraft. And again, these spacecraft come in, come in different sizes from the CubeSat that I mentioned before, all the way to this humongous Boeing spacecraft that has tens of meters of solar arrays, right? And it probably costs a billion dollars. So uh, spacecraft also are part of our portfolio. So those who are interested in aerospace engineering should love aircraft, rotorcraft, launch vehicles, uh, and access vehicles to space and spacecraft. So you have plenty to choose and you don't have to like all of them, but if you like a couple of them, then you are, you belong to a family. So that's what uh, Aero is all about. Uh, now the aerospace engineering is, uh, has a very strong industry as a backbone. Um, it's hundreds of thousands of uh, people who are employed in the aerospace, uh, we call it aerospace and defense industry. Uh, and it includes both the aircraft, the ones that I showed to you and also space systems and also um, uh, spacecraft and launch vehicles. So millions of people, a lot of, uh, you know, very robust industry uh, right here in uh, New England uh, and the Northeast, we have hundreds of companies uh, of all sides from startups, small startups, all the way to big uh, uh, corporations that uh, uh, you are uh, familiar with. So um, as you will see also from employment, we're doing extremely way well and uh, hopefully this will stay on for uh, the foreseeable future. Now, the other number I wanted to share with you is the number of degrees that we award in the United States. These are uh, lay, uh, data of 2017-18. Um, we have uh, data, uh, most recent data, and they're approximately in the same numbers, but uh, you should um, um, aim at about four to 5,000 BS degrees and about 1,600 masters and about 400 PhDs. So obviously you're interested in the bachelors of science degrees, BS degrees. So I would say, no more than 5,000 uh, uh, degrees. If you compare this now with other disciplines, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, for example, where they have tens of thousands, right? I want you also to appreciate the fact that the aerospace engineering programs in the country, there are a few, about 70, 80 of them, will, uh, and all of them of high, the highest caliber, and it's a small cohort of uh, undergraduates that uh, we uh, produce. Uh, now, let's uh, take a look into our uh, undergraduate program. Uh, we introduced the BS in aerospace engineering at WPA in 2004. So we've been doing this for quite some time. We are accredited by ABET and uh, most aerospace engineering programs are in, in, in the country. Uh, we have also BSMS, MS degrees and PhDs, which were introduced in 2014. So uh, we've been around for some time. And uh, as of July, 2021, we have been uh, an independent academic department, WPI. And uh, we are now the sixth largest major WPI with about 300 undergraduates and 30 graduate students. And actually, this is out of, as of July of 2020, not 2021, it's a typo there. And you see the enrollment is going up. Uh, so um, the incoming class probably is around, or I should say degrees that we award 60, uh, and we aim to about 70 uh, to 80 degrees. So that's the size of a program. We have 10 faculty, all ranks, and we're splitting the different um, systems that we uh, uh, study and we do research on. We have four faculty, uh, five faculty who are in, uh, engaged in what we call broadly aerodynamics and propulsion areas. We have two faculty in the area of flight dynamics and controls primarily, and uh, three faculty in the areas of materials and structure. So you can see also that the disciplines right relate to the uh, systems that I showed you before. Uh, the department has a good uh, set of laboratories, and I'm not going to bore you with these details, but uh, just to show you, right, we have wind tunnel facilities here, vacuum uh, chambers where we test uh, hardware uh, material, where we, st uh, we test structures, vibrations, as you realize, aerospace systems vibrate a lot, and they're made for, from very unique materials. Um, we have also combustion laboratories, um, labs for fluids and uh, intelligent systems and control, autonomy, we have two of those labs. And of course, we have a laboratory where we do the senior projects, the MQPs, the WPI, 
and a special laboratory, which we call Discovery Classroom, where we, we embed uh, exper experiments uh, that we have uh, spread over uh, several of our courses. So, so this in a nutshell is the uh, real estate we have in a WPI. And if uh, uh, you get a chance, uh, please come visit. So you get a chance to see some of those. Um, now I'm gonna spend a few minutes on the BS degree in aerospace engineering at WPI. And of course, as in any other uh, uh, program uh, that you will uh, consider, uh, there what we refer to as distribution requirements, the requirements for graduation. And those requirements uh, have to do with the general requirements and also the specific requirements for the major. So first of all, let's uh, set some uh, units, right? And nomenclature straight here at WPI. At WPI, we use a seven week term. So this is not a, a quarter, obviously it's not a semester. Uh, and during the seven weeks, uh, we meet uh, daily. Uh, and we have four of these terms per year and we have two terms in the summer. So uh, you need 15 of these terms to, uh, uh, to graduate with a, bas a Bachelor of Science. So it's not exactly four years, but it's 15 terms. And you can use uh, uh, your AP credits as we will discuss, or you can use summer terms to accelerate that. Uh, it's up to you, but um, uh, that's what you need for a BS degree. Now, we use also sometimes the concept of a unit at WPI. So a seven week course is equivalent to one third unit or three credit hours. So if you look into our liter literature and you see units and credit hours, this is the equivalent. Uh, so a typical load for a term is three third units or nine credit hours or three courses that you like. So that's what it is. And uh, now let's take a look into the general, the distribution requirements. So first, um, every engineer at WPI will have to spend 36 credit hours, all 12 course equivalent in what we call general education activities. And they include humanities and arts. This is a sequence of courses you're gonna take in the humanities and arts, social sciences, two courses, and physical education equivalent to one course. And then we have the interactive qualifying project or IQP. This is a major activity at WPI. And I strongly encourage you to see our project center. We have tens of uh, project centers around the world and our students uh, as juniors, they 90% uh, uh, of them embark into one of these IQP centers with the uh, accompanied by advisors and they complete a project that combines science, technology and society. So that's the IQP and that's one of the major projects with the WPI. And you're gonna hear about projects again and again at WPI. That's a hallmark of our ed education. We have these two major projects, the IQP and the MQP, which is the senior. And then a lot of other projects which are embedded, of course, in our classes. So, uh, so that's one of the distinct characteristics of the WPI education. Then every, uh, every engineer has nine credits of ours of three electives, three third units equivalent to three courses and students use this block to do a minor, to do a double major, or to take courses in anything that they like and we don't uh, require as, right, as a distribution requirement. So it's truly free electives. Then we have 10 third units of mathematics, which span calculus, the sequence. A lot of you will come with AP credits and you're gonna knock off some of those. We have physics, uh, two courses in physics that we require. Then we have another course, which we co-offer with the physics department. And it's a course in atmospheric and space environments. And we require also one course in chemistry. So again, those some of these courses, calculus, physics, or chemistry, you can utilize your AP credits and then speed up your graduation time. So these are the general requirements, and these are the same uh, for every engineer. And now these are the requirements that are the, that are related to the major, along of course with the math and and chemistry, etc. But these are the uh, hardcore requirements uh, related to the aerospace engineering major. We have two tracks in, uh, in aerospace engineering at WPI. One is the so-called aeronautical track and the other astronautical track. Now your degree is aerospace engineering. So I want to emphasize that. We don't offer a degree in aeronautical engineering or astronautical engineering, but there are these two tracks. So you're either gonna do the aeronautical track and then you're gonna dip into with courses in astro or you're gonna do the astronautical track and you're gonna dip into courses into aero. And this is regulated by EBIT, and that's why we offer it in this way. And then, of course, uh, in the aero track, you're going to take aircraft design, and then you're going to do your MPP, the major qualifying project. And then, if you are in the astro track, you're going to do spacecraft and mission design, the senior level course, and then you're going to do your MQP, the, the senior project, uh, which could be aero astro, right? The MQP could be anything. 
not regulated. But you see the kind of courses that we have, correct? You see courses in aerodynamics, materials, structures, propulsion, flight mechanics. These are the things that make uh, the systems, right? They are components of all the systems that I shared with you at the, at the very beginning. And then on the space side, we do orbital mechanics, attitude, determination, control. You know, you need to be able to orient. These are all autonomous vehicles, right? These are all robotic vehicles. That's what we do in aerospace. And we've been doing it for decades, right? Uh, telecommunications, space structures, again, rocket propulsion, things that move uh, space in, in space, while in space, and also launch vehicles. So all of them are, are components of these aerospace systems. So this is what makes you an aerospace engineer. And believe me, it's a doable uh, program, and I can uh, share with you a, a, a sample program. I have yet to find two students who follow the same program at WPI, okay? Because you come with different credits, you know, you take courses in different um, uh, terms. So, but this is uh, um, a sample program that takes you from math physics in the first year, you know, humanities, you knock off the humanities criteria. And then beginning in D-term, you would start taking the uh, aerospace engineering courses. These are course in material. Now, if you happen to come with um, math credits, right, with AP credits, obviously you're gonna start taking aerospace engineering courses from the uh, from uh, the first year. So that's very typical these days. And then of course, in your sophomore year, you, you know, uh, you uh, I take uh, most courses in aerospace engineering, right? And uh, you finish up your math and then that's that how it goes. And then I would block the IQP here. IQP doesn't have to be done in D term. Sometimes it's done in B term or C term. Students go abroad in a term that they like to do a, a certain project or it's convenient for them. Uh, and then of course, senior year, right? Culminates with the NQP that we have it here. NQP is done usually in three terms and um, uh, senior courses. Then a lot of our students, and I'm gonna mention this program, stay with the BSMS program. The five year program is very popular. More than half of our class uh, stays to do this five, fifth year program. Obviously there are a lot of benefits. You already have a term here, right? Which we mentioned. And then with openings from AP, uh, it's a program that is doable definitely in five years. And some students actually completed in uh, four and a half. So a very popular program. So that's the sample program. And let's talk a little bit about some other aspects of the, uh, of the program. First of all, let's talk about the MQPs. I mentioned the senior projects. And here I have some projects which we did in 2019, 2018. Obviously 2020, we did MQPs, but uh, uh, they did not involve realization, right? They were all designed MQPs due to COVID-19. So, so this is a project, for example, that involve a high power rocket and you see this rocket. This is not the run of a mill rocket, right? There's a lot of technology here. And uh, it involves uh, many students, right? 10, 15 students may be involved in this project. So they build and fly it and all that. Uh, we have also projects, as I mentioned, that involve the micro area vehicles. So those who are interested in aircraft design, every year we, uh, we are participating in the SAE co competition. Um, that's the aero design competition. And you see here students, right? Who build this uh, aircraft that change every year. Then we have a project that involves a, a CubeSat design, and we do that every year. And then, of course, we have product, projects in drones, UVs, and autonomy. So everything that I showed you in the beginning as a true system, right, that flies out there, we put our hands on and our students put their hands around right, each one of these uh, systems. Uh, so, and again, there is no, if you're in the aerotrack, there is no problem for you to be involved in a space design pro program or vice versa. So these MQPs are open regardless of the track. Um, now I mentioned the students participate in competitions. You know, I'm not gonna be labeled here on this list, but um, uh, we're gonna make this available so you can see where we participate and what we win. Our students do extremely well in competitions. These are the IAA, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics competitions. And we participate there every year. Um, as I mentioned also, we go to the SAE competitions. You see some of our students here, right? Uh, so, um, uh, and then um, uh, MQPs will bring us opportunities for uh, first year to juniors because we do these large projects and a lot of times uh, we open them up to uh, um, uh, first year all the way to juniors and then they build a community and that's one vehicle where uh, through which we allow students to interact and um, get their hands around uh, uh, design and projects from earlier on. Um, I know the other vehicle is our AAA chapter, student chapter. It's probably one of the biggest clubs at WPI and one of the most active ones. 
and they have different teams. They have a rocket club, they have a space cube design club, and they work uh, in groups, in teams, and they participate in uh, various competitions. For example, this is the student launch in initiative with our students here, the Battle of the Rockets is another fun uh, event that our students participate. So this is another vehicle where uh, from your first uh, year at WPI, you'll be able to hook up with the uh, students from the IAA club and you're gonna do things that are fun and you're gonna and meet uh, this, uh, the upper class uh, uh, from uh, students from the upper classes and uh, that forms a very, very nice uh, community. Uh, this club is advised by one of our faculty uh, and um, uh, you know we interact with them uh, uh, all the time, so so it's it's a pretty uh, good activity and very popular. Now we have also a lot of opportunities for summer research at WPI, especially as you become a junior and uh, as, um, um, uh, the junior year and above. Uh, we have programs funded by NASA, and we bring students uh, on uh, campus where they do uh, research in our laboratories. A lot of our students also go to NASA centers. They do also internships in the summer. So, um, uh, and as I mentioned, right, in your, uh, as a uh, first year student, probably you're not gonna be able to land an internship and uh, you may want to look into summer courses, for example. Uh, so you can speed up your graduation, but as um, uh, time goes on, then internships and all of these other opportunities uh, become available. Um, so, a few words about our BSMS program. I mentioned that uh, before, and uh, this is the fifth year program. And the benefits of this uh, program is the following. First of all, um, you are uh, admitted to the program by, uh, by admission to the BS degree. So it's a very informal application that uh, students uh, uh, put together while they're juniors, right? So we can see their plan basically and their intention, but it's a seamless program and the integration is seamless. And the good thing for the BSMS is you start because with a benefit. So instead of 30 credits, that is the typical amount of credits needed for a master's degree and for a master's degree at WPI, you count, double count eight credits. And of course, with three electives, et cetera, you can take additional uh, courses as an undergraduate. Um, and, um, and because of AP, obviously, right, you can speed up the, uh, the uh, time for graduation. So the BSMS is doable in five years and definitely four and a half. A lot of our students do that. And I'm going to show you some other benefits of the BSMS uh, program as well. Um, so um, let's um, uh, take a look now into uh, the outcomes of uh, and job prospects of our program. And that's uh, very important. Um, you, know, and you know very well undergraduate education is very expensive and you definitely need to see return on your investment. So that's what I'm going to talk about this now. Uh, so WPI has a very aggressive career development center called CDC. It helps students, it brings companies on campus, uh, uh, prepares students for graduation, for um, seeking uh, uh, jobs and opportunities. And our students, because of the projects they do, they're really ready to hit the ground, right? They have skills, they have communication skills. While you're doing your MQP, you're gonna present tens of times during the academic year. In your IQP too, you're gonna present in front of diverse audiences. So there's a lot of opportunities for this uh, preparation for WPI students. Now, I have here a list of companies that employed our graduates from, and I have this list here from 2015 and all the way to 2020. So let's take a look at this, right? So you may recognize some of these names, some you may not. Aurora Flight Sciences, a big uh, company, British Aerospace Systems, Systems, some of you may have heard, Aerospace Corporation, Corporation. I'm just speaking the bigger ones, right? Then General Dynamics, Electric, both the big submarines, right? But they do hire aerospace engineers. Uh, then we go here to Lockheed Martin, obviously, Lockheed Martin Sikorsky Aircraft, um, MTU Engines, um, Pratt & Whitney, this is a Raytheon company, Raytheon itself hires our, our students. Um, uh, so uh, uh, UTC, uh, so many, many of the companies that are, um, that I have here, right, are cover the entire spectrum, right, from small to medium to very large size. So. We have very, very good placement record. Also non-aerospace and defense companies hire our students, right? Amazon Robotics, right? Why wouldn't you hire aerospace engineers if you're interested in drones? What else would you hire? Um, and other companies like Target, Toyota, right? They do hire uh, aerospace engineers. And of course we have students in government, in uh, Air Force uh, Research Laboratories, Navy, um, uh, um, 
centers, uh, for example, and then graduate schools, you see at least here, this is not a comprehensive list, but we constantly, uh, uh, we update it, but um, uh, our students have uh, very, very good uh, prospects. And I have here some data, right, to show that to you. So let's uh, look, first of all, the top table uh, is focusing on bachelor's degrees, so from 2016 to 2020. 2020 is, was obviously, you understand, a very weird year, the COVID year, so um, uh, it, uh, it's, it was not an, a normal uh, year, so I wouldn't pay too much attention to the numbers there, although they're pretty good. But usually the success rate is in the upper 90s, right, as you see here, that's what we do. And uh, we're talking about 70s, we will see the uh, uh, 2021 data, the CDC is processing them and they will be coming out anytime now. Uh, so we'll be able to fill also the 2021 uh, data. Uh, so about 70, right, for a BS degree, uh, right after graduation. And then the MS, this is also includes the BSMS students that I mentioned, it adds about $10,000. And of course it adds different prospects, job prospects and uh, um, development within companies. So this is the differential of this fifth year uh, that uh, we mentioned uh, before with the BSMS. And that's what makes the project, the program very successful. So we're doing very, very well, right? In terms of placement uh, with this rate. And uh, that's what where you want to see. And that's where you're gonna be uh, with our program, very successful program and very well around it. Um, I'm gonna stop here. Uh, we have also some additional information which you can find in this uh, site here. There are some videos there with faculty where they discuss some of the work they do and MPPs they do in their, uh, 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 in uh, uh, in our laboratories. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna stop here and uh, we'll open up the Q&A. Uh, All right, perfect. So um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and use that Q&A feature. Um, we do have about another 15 minutes or so to uh, get those answered for you guys, so fire away. <clears throat> Now, I mean, one question just to start us off, I guess, while well, our folks might be typing here uh, that I was curious about, Professor, is um, I know that you mentioned that the five-year program is uh, pretty popular and the four and a half year, you know, is something that is possible as well. Um, how many students on average will try to, you know, get that master's done in just four years or is that not possible for the aerospace program? It is. And, you know, we have some students, but there are fewer um, because it requires a lot of uh, AP credits to be counted. Sometimes it requires you to do a summer, uh, take some courses in the summer, which we offer, or sometimes overload. Uh, but it is doable, and we've seen now. I don't have data for that uh, right in the, my fingertips, but there are students who do that in four years. Gotcha. And um, that's a good answer. Um, I feel like I, you know, noticed the same thing when talking to students, or, or I mentioned the same thing when talking to students about what is possible, right, in that four-year time frame. I hesitate to say that anything is impossible, but um, some things are easier than others. So um, it might not be easy per se, but it is definitely doable. Um, yes. Yeah. It just requires a little bit of scheduling. And of course, when somebody comes with a lot of credits, AP credits, then it's as easy as it would be uh, the fifth year, right? Right. And um, one thing I'll mention with that as well, for those of you who might not know, um, WPI accepts fours and fives on those AP exams, as well as sixes and sevens on those higher level IB exams uh, for class credit. So if you're bringing in any of those, you'll be in a, a good spot. Um, so first question that we have here that I actually think um, I'll answer because it's sort of an admissions sure. type question. Uh, yeah. How easy is it for outside credits or dual enrollment credits to transfer? Now, that's a great question. So for us, uh, like I just mentioned, APs, IBs, those transfer usually no problem, whereas dual enrollment can be a little bit more sticky. So um, for those DE credits, the process is essentially, uh, did you take that class at a college or university and is it going to appear on a college or university transcript? If it's going to appear on a college transcript, then the answer is maybe they can transfer. Uh, we do have to match that course with a uh, equivalent course at WPI. So um, we wouldn't be able to do that, unfortunately, until you enroll as a student. 
But if those courses do match up, then we can accept it for credit. If not, unfortunately, we can't. Now, one thing I'll mention that could ease your mind a little bit, we do have um, a service called the Transfer Evaluation System. So if you do a quick Google search of WPITES, that will show you a database of all the courses that we have been able to accept from other institutions in the past. So if the courses that you took or are taking um, show up on that list, then you can rest easy knowing that we would be able to accept those for credit um, for you as well. So I hope that answers that question. Um, all righty, so moving on here. Um, Professor, what would a typical class size be for classes within the major? Good. So let me bring the uh, schedule here and we'll talk about them. Uh, okay, so these are, uh, so dark, right, with dark color, black uh, are classes in the major. So for example, if you start uh, with the ES 2001, this is a class that uh, may have 80 students in the, it. It's the beginning uh, course, right, in materials. When you go to 2712, now this is an aerospace engineering uh, course. Um, so the ES, this ES course actually, it's a course that can be taken actually by other majors too. That's why it has this acronym ES. But let's start with 2712. So 2712 may have 60 students uh, and it's a class which has also a laboratory. Uh, so, uh, and, and then as we move on, right? As uh, if you go now to classes in the fall, the senior year, you're gonna have a classes that may have 20 students or 30 students. For example, the aircraft design may have 20, the spacecraft design may have 25, depending on the year, right? And the interest of students. So as you move on, right, class sizes changes. But remember, I mentioned WPI is all about projects. So now talking about class sizes, you're gonna do an MQP, which is equivalent to three courses. So in these three courses, you're gonna have a class size which may range from five to 10. So you need to factor that in, right? And you're gonna be interacting, for example, the MQP, we do this term. There are three of us professors and we have uh, close to 10 students. We do a spacecraft design and we meet with them one-to-one uh, -one, and then we meet as a group and they meet as a group. So there is a lot of one-to-one -one, uh, interaction at WPI through projects. The same is true for the IQP, again, three class. So six course equivalent classes, you're gonna have in very, very small cohorts. Uh, so that's what you need to factor in a WPI. So uh, relatively large classes in the beginning, um, 60, right? Then they go 40, 50, all the way down to 20. And then you have classes in the size of five to 10. Fantastic. All right, so moving on to the next question here. So um, what do you think sets uh, WPI's aerospace program apart from, this as other area schools, but I would say, you know, other schools that might be somewhat similar to WPI as well, that might be a little further away. Yes, as I mentioned, you know, aerospace engineering is a very unique uh, um, uh, major. It's offered in a few selective universities in the country, about eight of us. All of these programs are top quality. And I'm not going to tell you that we're better than program X or program Y, because we're not, right? We are all top programs, able accredited. We graduate about 5,000 aerospace engineers in the country. They go through a very rigorous program process. The aerospace engineering program is probably, a, a, you know, it's among the hardest uh, uh, majors uh, to achieve. And there is a reason for that, right? All of our systems fly and they are designed to very, very strict standards. So we do, uh, educate uh, uh, engineers very well. So where, where is the difference? The difference is that in the way we offer education here. I mentioned already uh, projects. So you're not gonna find these projects anywhere else. Yes, you're gonna do a senior design project in some other university, but it's gonna be better than a large classroom. You, you will never have this one-to-one -one equivalent to three uh, uh, courses. You're not going to have an IQP, which you're going to do in a country of your choice, pretty much abroad, right? A WPI, which combines society, technology, and social sciences. You're not going to do the humanities, which also culminates in an um, in inquiry seminar, as we call it, right? These humanities courses are all linked together thematically. Uh, so, so there are distinct characteristics in WPI education, and then the flexibility we have built into the program, things that students can do, right, and accomplish within these four years. So we are a very unique uh, school. We have a very unique program. It's recognized uh, nationwide uh, and through the Academy of Engineering, for example, uh, for its uniqueness. Uh, and also the other characteristic of WPI is that we all are involved in research in aerospace engineering, but we do have our labs open for our undergraduate students. And again, that's very important. You will see our 
PhDs and postdocs working with aerospace, with undergraduates in our laboratories, we recruit from them, we help them, right, go to other universities uh, and find all the jobs that I mentioned. So these are the unique features of WPI. As a program per se, the courses, if you compare one-to-one -one, uh, uh, programs in the country, they are very, very similar because we're all uh, uh, regulated by ABET, right? Or we are, we are right, using ABET for our accreditation. So we all follow pretty much the same path. Uh, so, um, so I guess I answered it uh, comprehensively, but uh, again, the unique features are, are educational characteristics, right, and style. So. And one thing I'll add on to that that I know that I've heard students mention before is just that um, working on a seven week time frame, working on that quarter schedule really prepares you very well for the real world because you're going to have deadlines. You're going to have uh, fewer than 15 weeks to finish projects a lot of the time. So um, especially if you're thinking about the defense industry, you know, everything's kind of quarterly, right? So if you get used to producing on that seven week time frame, it'll really help you out after WPI when you're kind of in the real world. Um, so the next question that um, sort of has to do, you know, kind of a similar thing here um, from Grace. So um, they asked, uh, a lot of colleges offer a BS in ME with a concentration or a minor in aerospace. Do you feel that a major in aerospace affords greater opportunities in the field? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. With a uh, BS uh, in ME and a concentration in aerospace, you're going to be a mechanical engineer, right? You're not going to be a, a, an aerospace engineer. You're not going to be a rocket scientist, right? And what does it mean? There are certain jobs that aerospace engineers do and mechanical engineers cannot do. There are a few things that uh, mechanical engineers can do and aerospace engineers cannot do. So as an aerospace engineer, you can always uh, track a job in with a mechanical engineering uh, major, always, because you have all the background, right? Uh, now, the, uh, the uh, in, right, because you have and understanding of uh, structures, you have understanding of fluids, etc. things that aerospace engineer, uh, mechanical engineers do. But the other way around, it's not uh, possible. And with a minor, we do offer a minor in WPI in aerospace engineering. A lot of students do our minor. Uh, but you take a, a limited number of courses, uh, so you can never capture the, the breadth and the depth that a, a rock, uh, an aerospace engineer has. So. For some, it may be a proper uh, choice, right? Career choice, but those who really want to be among these 5,000 aerospace engineers, yeah, there's no way out of it, right? Other than a bachelor's in uh, aerospace engineering. It's as simple as that. And I mentioned, right, we graduate about 40,000 uh, mechanical engineers in the country, but only 5,000, right? Less than 5,000 aerospace engineers. So it's a very unique cohort. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I, you saw also a placement, and uh, career placement right there in the upper 90s. So we're doing, we're doing very well. So yes, but you, that's not a degree in aerospace engineering as you probably realize. Awesome. All right, so one more question here. So does the MS uh, program require a thesis or are there other options such as internships, et cetera, that will satisfy those MS graduation requirements? Okay. The, uh, we have two uh, options for our masters. One is with thesis and the, and the other is without a thesis. Uh, so uh, those who want to go research intensive and they want to go, for example, for a PhD somewhere else or a WPI, they can pursue the MS thesis option. Uh, and uh, those who want to go and land a job in the industry and make this 80,000 plus uh, uh, dollars, right? Uh, as a first uh, salary. Uh, then they don't need to do a thesis, right? They, it's, uh, um, now, we have also things with uh, industry and um, there are certain uh, credits which can be done in industry that can count as uh, credit too. There are specific courses we have for that. Uh, and I, I, you know, I believe it's up to three credits, but um, the bulk of the job is going to be either in coursework or coursework plus uh, uh, thesis, right? If you pursue the BSMS. Perfect. All right, folks. So feel free to send in any of those, um, you know, questions that you might have um, as well. We do have a couple more minutes to answer any last questions that you folks might have. I'm going to bring the last uh, slide ahead so uh, you can jolt down this uh, site. And if it doesn't work, please email me to make sure <laughs> that... Um, and I know the admissions has a lot of material also in their, on their side, so. 
And one thing I'll mention as well is that, um, again, this session is being recorded. So um, if you want to show any of this information to your parents or a friend or anything like that, that might also be interested, um, it will be available on the WPI admissions uh, YouTube channel. So um, you can go check that out there. Um, so we had another question just come in here. Um, if visiting WPI in person, would it be possible to visit the labs or what would you recommend seeing that is aerospace specific? Okay. Um, now it depends when uh, you plan the visit. Um, and um, uh, some, you know, some of these visits we can arrange and this is uh, through admissions uh, to see a faculty member, for example, if uh, they are available. Uh, obviously we have, because we have hundreds and hundreds of visitors, these are more difficult to schedule, uh, but um, uh, it, is, uh, it is possible. But instead of a visit, we have uh, videos where we showcase some of our laboratories. And uh, you know, in this um, channel that I have here, we have some of these laboratories and we're gonna populate more there. So eventually you'll be able to virtually visit all of our laboratories. And that's obviously removes all the uh, pressure and the uh, inability we have to write to showcase our laboratories to individuals. So. And um, I did just post that link in the chat here as well. So feel free to just click on that there um, as well. So make me that much okay. easier to find. <laughs> All right, folks. So um, yeah, any last questions, please feel free to, to send those in. And um, one thing I'll mention too, if you do have a question that maybe you, um, you know, don't want to answer, don't want to have answered here, um, you can email any questions, whether it is for a faculty member, a student, or the admissions office to just admissions at wpi.edu. We can then make that connection and make sure that you, um, you know, get the answer from the, the person who can answer that best. Um, all right, so just a, a nice comment here for you at the end. Thank you, presentation was very helpful. I learned a lot. I look forward to visiting in November. Uh, great to hear that you'll be visiting Adam. Um, yeah, we do also, again, if you guys want to come and check out campus, uh, I guess I'll do a quick plug here for our visit opportunities. So uh, we are offering info sessions and campus tours pretty much every day. Um, we're gonna have select Saturdays available for that too. So you can find all of that out on the admissions website, which I'll actually drop a link to here in just a second. Um, along with that, we do have virtual info sessions as well as virtual tours available. Those virtual tours, you can either do it by yourself or we do have guided tours every week too, where our tour guides actually hop on like on a uh, Zoom webinar a lot like this, and they guide you through our, uh, our virtual tour, kind of you know tell you what you're looking at. Um, I would say the biggest value add though, um, for you folks who are looking to learn a bit more about WPI is going to be our next virtual open house. I believe it's on October 13th. So just about a week away here. And, um, that open house is going to consist of your typical info session, um, as well as um, a faculty panel and then a student panel as well. Uh, so that's a good opportunity to you know ask a couple of our you know faculty members questions about course selection and how the curriculum works and all that, and then of course ask our students about uh, student life. So good opportunity to you know learn more about WPI if you are interested in engaging in a, a virtual format. Um, so I did just drop a link again to that visit page too. So if you haven't visited yet, feel free to check that out and, uh, and book a visit with us. Um, but otherwise, I think we are all set for the night here, Professor. So thank you guys very much for, for joining us again. Feel free to use any of those links. Um, and we hope to see you guys on campus sometime soon. And um, again, let us know if you have any questions after this. Thank you, Ian. Good luck, everybody, with your uh, school search. And uh, have a good evening. Wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you, Ian.